So we've been looking at limits. We looked at what a limit was graphically. So as we're approaching some X value, um, we were just looking at finite X value. So if we're approaching some number, um, X is approaching some number, we're trying to figure out what's going on with the graph. What is that Y value? And so here are some basic limit laws that are gonna help us solve these limits algebraically. Um, so first of all, let's look at if C is a constant, then it tells me that the limit as X approaches A um, of C is just C. Okay. If we had an equation, basic this is saying is, let's say we had some function F of X is equal to a constant. And so they just said C, but let's just do some real example. So x f of x equals two, or another way to say this y is equal to two. This is a horizontal line, right? And so if I look at this and I graph this, and we know we have a horizontal line through x um, y equals two, And so any value we choose on this graph, so it doesn't matter what value we choose. So let's just say something over here, A. If we look at the limit as X is approaching A here, it doesn't matter where we are, where A is. As X is approaching A on this, our Y value is always gonna be two in this case. So the limit, as X approaches A of some constant, in our case, again, that's two, is gonna equal two. So this is just um, arbitrarily saying C can be any horizontal line. And if we look at the limit anywhere on that horizontal line, if it's continuous everywhere and defined there, then it's always just gonna be what that constant is. The second one, the limit as X approaches A, is equal to, um, of x is equal to a. So again, if you think about this graphically, if we looked at our function f of x equals x or y equals x, that's just a line and it's a diagonal line that goes through the origin. And so if we looked at this graph, this is the line y equals x. And so we know that if we're plotting points, any value we plug in for x is the same y value. So if we're looking at any limit here, so we could arbitrarily put a anywhere, and this value that we're gonna get back for y is also gonna be a. Okay, so that is the second basic um, limit law. And based off of these, we can actually just go in a lot of times when we're looking at limits um, algebraically and just plug in that finite number. Okay, so let's go over some more of the laws. Well, there's this addition law. And so what the addition law is telling us, if we look at a limit as X approaches A of some function F of X, and the limit as X approaches A of some function G of X. And we're given that both of those limits exist. Then the limit of this whole thing, and there should really be brackets maybe around this, maybe not, um, is saying that I, I'm looking, I can just take it in pieces. I could look at the limit of the first piece plus the limit of the second piece. So this is really helpful with polynomials. So two terms in there, we have a limit of 2x plus 2. I can break that down if I was looking at the limit of that as the limit of 2x and plus the limit of 2. Don't think of this as distributing the factor. This kind of looks like we distributed that limit there and, and that's really not what that meant. Same idea with subtraction. So maybe it was 2x minus 2. And so subtraction, if we know that the limit of our two values exist and there's subtraction in between those two values, um, then we can break it up as a limit of the first minus the limit of the second. For some reason, maybe you have a coefficient, a number in front of that variable. 
Well, this next law, this constant law, is saying that if we know c is a constant and the limit as x approaches some number a of f of x exists, then we could take that function and multiply it by any constant. And then that limit would also exist. And it would actually be c times whatever the limit of f of x was. So other words that are helpful is this multiplication law. And so again, we have to say that these limits exist in order for these to hold true. But if we know the limit of the product of the factor of one, f of x exists, and the limit of the other factor, g of x, that exists, and we're looking at the limit of that product, then we can break it down as the limit of the first times the limit of the second. So same kind of thing happens with division. Both limits exist. With division, we got to be careful because with division, we can't have the denominator equal zero or it's undefined, um, it's undefined or we might be getting something as zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. So we have that extra condition on here, but if we're looking at a limit of a quotient, we can break it down as a limit of the numerator all over the limit of the denominator. Two more to look at, so the power law. So if we have some limit, that function f of x exists, then basically we could raise that to any power. Um, so the limit of f of x raised to the nth power. Well, we know the limit of f of x exists. We can say, well, this is the same thing as let's first take the limit of the inside and then raise it to that power. Same kind of idea with the root law, basically square roots or um, the nth root of some things. Remember, we're just exponents. So kind of like the power law. Um, so if we were asked to take the limit of a square root of something or the nth root of some function, and we know that the limit of the function underneath that radical um, exists, then we can just take the nth root of whatever that number was, the limit um, of f of x underneath the radical. So those are the rules. Now let's just look at an example of using these rules. Um, normally we wouldn't go through and write out each step of why we are doing this and using the rules, um, but it's good to know the concepts behind it and why we're doing it. So the first example in here says evaluate the following limit using the limit laws and justify each step. Okay, so notice that this says the limit as x is approaching negative two, and we have this polynomial three x squared minus two x minus three. And so there was a limit law that says, well, we can break this up as into three separate limits. We can look at this as the limit of the first piece, x is approaching negative two of three x squared, minus the limit as x is approaching negative 2 of negative 2x. I'm oh, sorry, I already put the minus out front, so let me just do positive 2x. Minus the limit as x is approaching negative 2 of 3. Okay, so that was the uh, limit rule for subtraction up here. So we just use the subtraction law for the limits that we just went through. Okay, so it also told us that if we have a constant times a function, we can pull that constant out and take the limit, that coefficient, take the limit of whatever that function is. So notice here we can take out this three. So we can pull it out front. Same thing with this two, we can pull it out front.
Okay, so we're going to pull those coefficients out in front of the limit. So we have three, and then we're going to have the limit as x is approaching negative 2 of x squared minus, we're going to pull that 2 out. Let me pull that out in a second. Of x minus, well, remember we said that if we look at the limit of some constant, that was just that constant itself. Remember, that's just a horizontal line going through 3. So when we're looking at when x is um, getting closer and closer to x equals negative 2 on the left and the right, you're still getting that y value 3. So right here, we can say this is 3. So there's multiple rules that we had used, right? We pulled out the coefficient. Law, and then we just did the um, rule for limit of a constant. Okay, so I see one other one that we can do. If we have a power, we can rewrite it. So this is the three is out front. I'm going to look at the limit as x is approaching negative two of x. But then it says I can look at that limit and then square what that value is. Minus two, the limit as x is approaching negative two. I could have done this one already of x minus 3. So the second rule that we saw was the limit of as x is approaching a of our function x just gives us back a itself. Same idea here. This is our x value. So if we plug in negative 2 where we see the x, that's what that limit is. So we have the 3 out front all times the negative 2 that limit of x approaching negative 2 of x is negative 2. Then we're going to have to square this minus this 2 in front of the limit. And again, using this rule, I know the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x is just negative 2. Um, so times negative 2 and then minus this 3. So we're almost there. We can. Um, just simplify this order of operations. So I got three all times negative two quantity squared is four, negative two times negative two. So this is a plus four minus three. So I have 12 plus four minus three, which is 16 minus three, which is 13. Okay, so there's the example of why we can um, do what I'm going to show you next. But the rules we had seen above, we were applying them in each step and getting our result. So let's, I'm going to stop the recording and start on a new example.